I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. <clears throat> so then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. In the Episcopal Church, the liturgy for the dead is an Easter liturgy. It finds all its meaning in the resurrection. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we too shall be raised. This liturgy, therefore, is characterized by joy in the certainty that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This joy, however, does not make human grief unchristian. The very love we have for each other in Christ brings deep sorrow when we are parted from those we love by death. Jesus himself wept at the grave of his friend. So while we rejoice that the one we love has entered into the near presence of our Lord, we sorrow and mourn in sympathy with those who loved her. We welcome you all today to St. John's Episcopal Church and this celebration of the life of Mary Rachel Worley. Please find a hymn book. It should be in the rack in front of you. And turn to hymn number 67 as we sing together.
you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Mary Rachel. We thank you for giving her to us, for family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, <coughs> whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Mary Rachel's family and friends in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord of God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these things are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God and they will be my children. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Let us say together the 23rd Psalm. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for the Lord's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff.
Our magnificent Mary was gifted to us on April 3rd, 1991, and returned home on November 22nd, 2018. Mary Rachel and I joined forces roughly eight years ago. I feel blessed, grateful, honored, and humbled to have known her and to be asked to honor her life today. She played many roles in my life, as I'm sure she has for all of you. She was a dynamic soul with a thirst for living. Intelligent, charming, funny, kind, compassionate, and fiercely loyal. Our meetings were full of silliness, sadness, confrontation, problem solving, accountability, hard work, and love. The relationship I shared with her was very special. I am her therapist and had the privilege of understanding her on so many different levels. Not only did I know Mary on many levels, but she was allowed to know me on many levels. Our friendship allowed a safe space for her to express and experience her darkest moments, her proudest moments, and some of our silliest moments. Mary Rachel loved to make jokes about me, and she had plenty of material to do so. As a formal, former athlete, Mary Rachel was always aware when I was in preparation for competition and took it upon herself to send me endless pictures of the glorious food that she was inhaling. <laughs> and asked, I bet you wish you were me right now. Lots of times I wish I was Mary Rachel. But behind her infectious laughter and smile was a woman of resilience, strength, and darkness. Mary Rachel worked tirelessly to overcome her diseases, and in this last year of her life, I do believe she was in remission and living her life worth living. Mary Rachel struggled, struggled with borderline personality disorder as well as bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is rooted in chemical misfiring in the brain. Mary Rachel was committed to overcoming her disease and responded well to medication management. Borderline personality disorder is a very different demon and requires commitment, willingness, strength, and unwavering faith in treatment. BPD brings with it a host of challenges ranging from chronic suicidality and self-harm to interpersonal chaos, low sense of self, fears of abandonment, and addiction. Mary was committed to overcoming this disorder, but people with BPD can be incredibly skillful at hiding their struggles. They present as apparently competent lots of the time. If you imagine a duck sitting on a pond, they're very beautiful and serene, but underneath their flappers are working tirelessly to stay afloat. You will likely come in contact with someone with BPD on a daily basis and not even know it due to their apparently competent presentation. Other times it's hard to ignore their struggling. They become suicidal. They self-harm. They work overtime to reject you. They devalue every aspect you bring to the relationship and they isolate from friends and family. They engage in impulsive addictive behaviors. During our eight years together, Mary worked valiantly to manage her symptoms. She sometimes lost her way, engaged in her addiction, and dropped out of treatment. But she always came back to me, and our fight resumed. One of the most difficult things for loved ones of people with BPD is to accept them back into their life after they've been mistreated and devalued. But one of the most frightening things for someone like Mary Rachel is that fear of rejection and abandonment. They just crave unconditional love and acceptance. Mary Rachel and Annie's relationship reflected unconditional love and acceptance. She devalued her and rejected her when she was in addiction, but Annie always accepted her back and we kept fighting. This year, Mary Rachel was very independent and Annie allowed her to have that young adult life that she craved, and she did it beautifully. Mary Rachel operated in so many roles during our time together. She taught me strength, resilience, and loyalty. I always expected her to return whenever she lost her way. The phone call I received on Thanksgiving morning was traumatic and unexpected. She was in remission from borderline personality disorder. 
She did not meet criteria for borderline personality disorder. 2018 was her year. She was successful, enrolled in school, excelling academically. She attained employment, engaged in daily self-care, had a home, and a baby girl named Zoe, who she loved without measure. And Zoe blessed our therapy sessions all the time. Mary Rachel was full of joy, love, pride, and charisma, embracing her life worth living. If you met her for the first time this year, you may not have even known the demons she fought day in and day out. And you may not know the demons of the person sitting next to you. Mary Rachel's death has awakened a tenacious, tenacious spirit in me, one very similar to hers. It is a primary focus to educate about mental illness and addiction, to contribute to reducing the stigma associated with mental illness. Mary never met a stranger. She was helpful to everyone in her path, even if she didn't like you. She accepted everyone exactly as they were. She loved without measure. One of the most admirable and honorable traits of individuals like Mary Rachel is their ability to experience intense empathy and compassion. People with BPD feel on a level that is unimaginable to the average person. Their emotional intensity is frightening sometimes as it leads to maladaptive and harmful behaviors. But other times, their emotional intensity and sensitivity serves as a reminder and a role model of how we should love one another. Love without conditions, love without measure, practice acceptance of all people. Separate the person from their actions and words. Recognize that every single person is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. Practice compassion. Practice understanding. Seek the divine in one another. Mary was a model of love, tenacity, acceptance, sensitivity, and hard work that we should all aspire to become. Mary Rachel was a magnificent, she's laughing at all these adjectives right now, wise, sweet, loyal, successful woman who I have on, I'm honored to have known. She was gifted to me, to us, for such a short time. And in this time, she impacted me more than I can put into words. I believe she's done this for all of us gathered here today. My wish for you is that you remember her laugh, her smile, her tenacious spirit, and undying love for all of you. And in remembering her, I challenge you to allow her spirit to live through you. Practice what Mary Rachel taught us. Never stop fighting for your life. Accept every single person exactly as they are. Love without measure. Laugh. Help one another and forgive. She will forever hold a special place in my heart. Her noon Thursday session will never be filled. And I will live with intention and purpose to teach the world what she taught me to love unconditionally. Thank you, Angela, for truth and for wisdom. That was lovely. Thank you so much. In the name of the one who created us in love, who created us for love, and who loves us still. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. John's Gospel that we read today says, do not let your hearts be troubled. These are Jesus' words speaking to us. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am you may be also. I love this portion of scripture because it tells me that God is for us, not against us. He wants us to be where he is, and so he makes room for us in heaven's home. He assures us of this several times in all the readings that we have heard today and everything that we have heard. 
As we've already heard this morning, Scripture continually reminds us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. We heard an echo of this in that wonderful hymn that we sang at the beginning of the service, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. These opening lines express the very heart of God to us at this moment, now and always. So today as we gather to remember and celebrate the life of Mary Rachel Worley, we do need God's comfort and consolation. We remember a daughter, a niece, a sister, a cousin, a friend, a granddaughter that brought both joy and laughter and sometimes pain and sadness. And although she was not all victorious in her battle against disease of addiction, she nevertheless is victorious today. I know this. And even though we mourn, we do not do so as those who have no hope. Yes, there is death in the world, robbing us of the one we loved, robbing her of our presence. But God, who is immortal, assures us that death can take a person out of our future, but does not take her out of our past. All the things that we love about Mary Rachel are etched so deeply in our souls, in our memories, and they remain a part of us. Yes, the Lord gives, but the Lord does not take away. And Mary Rachel's presence is every bit as real as her absence. We can admit today to being vulnerable. We admit to being human. We admit to hurting and aching. We admit the pain that we feel for ourselves and we long for things to be different. And this is our common pain. We feel this for ourselves and those we love, personal and deep and undeniable. But the one that we are missing does not share in our pain and sorrow. She is rejoicing today. And I think you're right, Angela. She's laughing at all these wonderful <laughs> adjectives. Mary Rachel is now with our Lord in that home that he promised he would prepare for her. And through the grace of God, we've come to know that because we are made in his image, even in death, nothing can separate us, not even death, can separate us from the love of God. I believe that with all my heart. That is true for Mary Rachel and for each one of us. I'd like to share a story um, with you about Mary Rachel's journey of faith. One day last April, we went out to dinner to a little pizza place around the corner from where I lived. And she walked in and she was so upbeat and funny and had that merry twinkle in her eye that I'd come to love so much. And we chatted about hopes and dreams for the future. She talked about going back to school. She talked about getting her life on track. Mostly just wanting life to work. And she knew it was going to take serious effort. And she had that certain glint, certain something in her eye that told me she was serious this time. I talked with her about God being for her, that he had a plan and a purpose for her life. And yes, she did have amazing gifts of leadership and of compassion and creating community wherever she went. So at the end of our conversation, I asked her, how, how can I pray for you? I told her, I'm going to write it down on my phone right now. Give me a minute. Slow thumbs. But I did it. So she gave me a list right then. And as Providence would have it the other day, I was looking on my phone in the List app, and I was looking for a certain something, and then I came across MR's list, and I went, oh my goodness, there's the list. So I scrolled it, and I opened it. April 5th, 2018, MR's list. And here's what it said. Pray for, and I quote, clarity, health, for her back to be healed and relief from pain for peace, for good friends, and good friends who are stable. I believe the Lord did all those things. He has a funny way of answering our prayers. In this upside down kingdom, we don't always see that answer the way we think we should, but I believe he answered those prayers. At Mary Rachel's baptism many years ago as a child, she was marked 
with a cross on her forehead. And in our tradition, you are marked as Christ's own forever. Forever, unconditionally, without exception. Marked as Christ's very own forever. And so, it can be said, nothing that happens today, nothing that happens tomorrow, nothing that happened two weeks ago, neither a power from on high nor a power from below, nor anything else in God's whole world has any power to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus our Lord. So, do not let your hearts be troubled. Stand or kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. <laughs> For our sister, Mary Rachel, let us pray to the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Mary Rachel and dry the tears of those who weep. Yes, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Yes, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Yes, Lord. Comfort us in our joys and our sorrows of the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and internal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for Mary Rachel and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May her soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. prepare for our communion. At this table, all are welcome, regardless of faith tradition. You are welcome at this altar. As we take communion, if you wish to receive the wafer, just put your hands out like this. 
and it will be passed to you. And when you receive the cup, you may either drink from the cup or dip your wafer into the cup. If you prefer to receive a blessing from the priest, if you will cross your arms like this on your chest, we will know. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, 
to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints, with Mary Rachel, into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.
prayer <coughs> found in your service bulletin. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with spiritual food and drink by the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort and affliction, and a pledge of our inheritance to the kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crime, but the fullness of joy of all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Please remain standing for the commendation. <clears throat> Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Mary Rachel, with your saints. Where the sorrow of man are no neither sign but life of us. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give the rest of Christ to your servant and to your saints. For sorrow and pain are no more. Neither sign but the life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we command your servant in your nation. We humbly beseech you, acknowledge a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own being. And so you her into the arms of your mercy, and into the blessed rest and everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Amen. Life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ our Lord and God the Father. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Rest eternal, great to Mary Rachel, O Lord. May her soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Please join us in singing page 410 in your hymnal.